It's a mailbag Monday. We're talking about how Jason Tatum is perceived. An idea for where to put a stadium in my favorite season and moments of my career. It's all right now. The Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand. It's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT. No, we not on the next. Watch a competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Juice still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds gain in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from Dean White on the breakdown. John on the mic document and domination. Matter pen of back bay. It's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started. Raising Venice. How we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And I'm here for you every day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts when they play in the weekends. So maybe sometimes six or seven podcasts. No one's giving you this much podcasting, not for free. So go check this show out wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe, ring the bell on YouTube. And get into that comment section. If you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I've been covering the Celtics team for about 20 years. Now I'm doing it as a beat writer for Boston Sports Journal. I've also written a couple of books, including Built Different, out now. You can get on my website for 30 bucks, signed and personalized. Uh, 30 bucks shipping in the United States. If you want it somewhere else in the world, we can talk, but it's going to be more expensive. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Today's a mailbag day. Mailbags can be submitted at JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag. JohnCorrales.com slash mailbag. It's the only way to submit your questions. And we're going to start off right away with Jonas who says, I'm peeved, John. Really, really peeved. Well, all right, let's go. He says, I've told people my favorite player is Jason Tatum. And every time they respond with, Jason Tatum? He's like the Dak Prescott of the NBA. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly how they say it, but uh, it feels I feel that's so disrespectful, Respectful, he says. Am I wrong? He's not Brady or Mahomes, but he's better than Dak, right? Yes. Although, look, I admit I'm not uh, very great with NFL comparisons. I don't know who to compare Tatum to, but I will say this. I know Dak Prescott has not won a championship, so Tatum's got him there. Tatum's also been to another finals. He's been to how many conference finals uh, on top of the two that got him to the championships? Uh, he's He's had huge moments and the thing that gets me honestly i have no problem with fair criticisms of players i am not going to sit here and gas people up i don't think unnecessarily if you're good you're good if you're not you're not you have your strengths you have weaknesses but be fair tatum has had a lot of big moments he has had a ton of big moments he had most recently, well, he's had a bunch of like unheralded big moments throughout the course of the season. He had that big fourth quarter last previous season uh, in Philadelphia where he had that monster fourth quarter. He put the, the Sixers away with a 50-point fourth quarter, I mean, uh, game seven. He He's had huge games. Uh, that few years ago where he had a huge game six to save the Celtics season on the road in Milwaukee. Jason is not like when you say he's not Brady or Mahomes, that means he's not LeBron or Steph. Okay. I don't think anybody will ever say that he's in that class. He's not in that class. He's in the next class down, which is a pretty damn good class. Okay. So he's not LeBron. Who is LeBron is that's it. He's not Steph. Who is that's, I think people, are focused on maybe the past season and a half where he's missed a few last second shots. He really has gotten into a rut of step back three pointers that haven't really fallen uh, a lot recently. Okay. That's, that's not great. And we all will acknowledge, I'll be the first one to tell you, I hate that shot. Maybe sometimes that's, that's a fine shot, 
But the Celtics need to, in those situations, maybe help him get open a little bit more. The one thing he's not really able to do, especially if you're sending a, a second player or showing some help, he's not able to get past that first line as easily as some other guys. And that's something that he has to work on. Uh, if I'm looking at an improvement for him, that could actually be one. Finding a way to just make that first step a little bit quicker and finding a way past that first guy in li- in last second moments, last shot moments, he definitely needs to improve that. There's no doubt about that. But he has also had huge, huge moments and was a huge reason why the Celtics won this championship this year. He didn't win finals MVP, but he could have. And he was so good. He was just so good at what he was asked to do, which was draw a lot of attention, pass the ball, and get the ball moving. I think people in the league understand who Jason Tatum is. That's why he's first team NBA. If people on the internet want to call him Dak Prescott, well, let them. Because it just goes to show how ignorant they are. If you're out there saying, oh, he's Dak Prescott, like, all right, well, tell me you don't know ball without telling me you don't know ball. That's how I would take it. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, Jakob, I'm going with the soft J's here on these names. I don't know. Maybe it's Jacob, but I'm going with Jakob because maybe I'm Greek. Maybe I want to go with uh, a more, you know, a little more exotic pronunciation. Says, hey, do you have an opinion on the idea to expand the all-defense team from 10 to 15 players? I think I would like to think defense gets at least the same recognition as offense. I'm a fan of that move, and I would hate to hear the argument like, no, you can't do that because you can't find 15 good defenders in the NBA. There's got to be 15 dudes in the NBA that are such high-level defenders that they get recognition. I don't know. maybe. If you don't want to do three teams, what what about if you did a sixth man? First team plus a sixth man. Second team plus a sixth man. Maybe you add two or just call them two wild cards. You know, or just say we're we're doing the top 12 players. I know we're doing teams, and the idea of a team is five players, but you make the rules, NBA. You can make it anybody as many as you want. You can say it's eight players. You can say it's 12. You can say it's 15 or 18, whatever. You don't have to abide by multiples of five. We're only doing multiples of five because it's a team and you do five, five, five. You you don't have to do that. You can just expand it. You just say, hey, we're naming naming two wild card uh, all defense players. Throw a couple extra guys in there. If you don't think you can get 15 good candidates. I think you can, but yes, somehow, some way I would like to expand the all defense teams because Jalen Brown could have gotten onto that team. I think, and and he should be motivated to get onto that team this year. There are guys on the Celtics that, that could make an all defense team. If it was expanded, why not? You've got three, three teams for all NBA. You've got, why not? Why not just, three teams for, for all defense or some level of expansion. I'd like to see more guys get recognized for that. Uh, we'll come back with questions about LeBron ruining the Lakers. Interesting. And my favorite moments and seasons to cover on this beat. This is a lot of fun. We'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And if you're an NFL fan, we're we're in the right at the beginning of the season here. Who knows what's real and what's not? Uh, but you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel because not only the America's number one sports book, if you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more, all on the same page where you place your bets. So it's a great way to keep up with everything that's going on. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you got to do is place your first $5 bet. Win or lose, you're going to get 200 in bonus bets over at fanduel.com. Go check it out. 
Make sure you're using those tools to set your limits and set your budget so you can have fun with your disposable income, gamble responsibly, and in, and just enjoy yourself at FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. Thanks for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out the Lockdown NBA podcast, which I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. It's a fun way to go check out the rest of the league, get caught up on the big stories. It's it's a great show, I think. I mean, I host one of the days, but we've got rotating hosts all week long. It's it's just a fun way to, to, to catch up on the league. Make it your second listen. Just stick with the Lockdown Podcast Network, and you'll be A-OK. Let's get back to the questions here. From Garrett, did LeBron ruin the Lakers? <laughs> Look, the Lakers, I'll say this. They are lucky that the bubble was what it was. They they won a championship, and you can't take that away from them. But they were not – They I wholeheartedly believe that if it was a regular season, LeBron and Anthony Davis were not healthy enough to make that playoff run. I can't say that for sure because we never know, but they were not healthy enough to make that playoff run. In my opinion, I feel like something would have gone wrong for the Lakers along the way. They were in the bubble. They had months to recover. There was no travel for series. You just stayed in the same place. So there was no uh, grind of up and down in planes and going this for, you know, that way, the, they got a lot of rest, and they ended up winning. Good for them. So that got them the championship. So I would say, no, LeBron didn't ruin the Lakers because he got them a championship. As I don't want to say asterisk, but it's uh, it's a conversation piece. But did he ruin the Lakers because they have struggled to put a team around him. It's it's an interesting concept. No, I don't want to say he ruined the Lakers. The Lakers are doing what every team with an aging superstar does. They're trying to maximize whatever few years they have left. Maybe the Lakers didn't understand exactly how much LeBron had left, and they went big, big, big early and kind of handcuffed themselves didn't realize maybe they had a bigger window than they thought. Maybe, and I, I didn't really care to go into some of the transactions that they've made between now and then, but it's, they, they've really kind of put themselves in a tough spot because once LeBron goes and Anthony Davis goes, I don't know what their plan is to turn this around. And how is this relevant? You're going to be like, John, why the hell are you talking about the Lakers? Well, the Celtics have 18 championships, and the Lakers still claim they're 17, even though they're counting the Minnesota days. Uh, so Los Angeles has 12, Minnesota has five. But regardless, the Lakers, 17 championships, the Celtics have 18. They could get a 19th. Hey, let, you want to get greedy, greedy in an ultimate best case scenario, they could get 20. But 19 is not out of the question here. 20 is a reach. 19 is not out of the question. But after, let's just say somewhere in the next year or two, they do get to 19. The Lakers aren't getting to 17, getting to 18 anytime soon. But the Celtics, even if they retool, they still have the option of keeping Tatum and Brown and maybe one of their other guys, Tatum, Brown, Derek White, and then figuring out the rest. And they do have role players. Hauser can stick around. Pritchard can stick around. Some of these other guys can stick around. They could build, depending on how the NBA looks moving forward. I know Victor Wembanyama is going to have a lot to say about this. And, and some other guys are going to have a lot to say about how, uh, what kind of contenders other teams are. But it's not out of the question that the Celtics could keep this rolling in some form. Maybe not the number one seed, but two, three, four seeds somewhere after they make moves to cut payroll. So if you're in the playoffs and you got some decent players and you got Tatum and Brown, it's not out of the question to say maybe they get a 20 somewhere down the road within the Tatum and Brown era. Maybe Jason Tatum finishes his Celtics career with three championships. 
that is not, uh, that's not an impossibility. And it's not even like Homer green goggle, you know, potential here. The Celtics are the favorites to repeat. So winning a 19th is not, a lot of people are picking Boston to say somewhere between if the Celtics do repeat somewhere between then and the end of Tatum's run in Boston, that they can't win another one somehow with this front office, with the moves, with the draft picks, whatever, they could find a way to win a third. And so they get to 20, the Celtics will get to 20 before the Lakers get to 18, the way things are, are shaping up, unless they hit some sort of crazy luck or, you know, if Lakers exceptionalism takes over and a couple of free agents decide they need to go there. But the CBA won't just allow that to happen the way it has in the past. Uh, so that's my Lakers spiel. Drew asks, what's your favorite season to cover as a whole? Could we get a best of John Corral's video <laughs> that goes over your greatest moments on the pod as well? I don't know what moments you would have on this podcast in a greatest moments. The only thing I can think of is uh, my, my best analogies. If somebody wants to go through and compile my best analogies, I'll be happy to listen to it. I think it would be funny, but I don't think my out of context points that I make would be a, a greatest moments podcast. That would be a big old dud. My favorite season to cover as a whole. Well, this past one was really good because they won a championship and I enjoyed, I did enjoy the back and forth a lot with, with Joe. Um, but on a personal level, my favorite season was that first year post Kyrie because Kemba Walker was here and Kemba is just a joy to be around an absolute pleasure, joy. I would, I would sit and watch TV with Kemba Walker and just, you know, like he, and it feels like, like, I know he would never. I know he would never just sit there and watch TV with me. I know he's got a million better things to do, but his personality is such that you feel like he might. He's he's that good a person. And so that first year, there was a collective relief of like, oh man, that's over. And everybody was just trying to be so nice. And I think it was Grant Williams' rookie year. And so we got like a little bit of kind of goofiness with that. They were just, it was just fun. And like I said, Kemba, Kemba would answer everything. That was my first, second season with Mass Live, I think. Uh, and I, you know, trying to like come up with any sort of idea to, to, to hit. And Kemba, Kemba answered every single question. And I think back. Maybe some of them were really, really dumb and I might have been grasping, but he was right there giving them a thought. So that was that was my absolute favorite season to cover because it was just fun. Um, and I, you know, I had a lot of fun traveling. I did have a lot of fun traveling, following the team around the country. Um, and I was, you know, traveling with Tom Westerholm a lot. And, you know, I've I have become like legitimately friends with Tom Westerholm through that. And it was it was just a lot of fun exploring other arenas and, and cities. And it was, it was, it was a blast. The greatest moment I witnessed on the job basketball wise, the championship, no doubt the championship, um, the Jalen Brown shot to send it to overtime against Indiana was a huge, huge moment. The Peyton Pritchard half court shot was a huge, huge moment. Um, but obviously the championship, what beats a championship, uh, you know, watching that confetti and seeing, see, just seeing the, the, like it was, it was, it was nuts. Um, watching like Jalen Brown kind of filter back in at four or five in the morning, uh, after having celebrated all night walking in. And I think he was like, you know, what a beautiful scene or something like that. He's just walking in. He's like, he's beautiful. This is so beautiful or so, something along those lines. Uh, it was, it was kind of great to, to, to witness that, um, but my low key different, like I had a, a, my favorite 
my favorite moment I ever witnessed. I wrote a story about it on Mass Live. It was back in November of 2019. So this is five years ago. They play a game on a Monday. The ball gets stuck up on the behind the backboard, right, between the backboard and the shot clock. And Marcus Smart ends up picking up a broom and knocking it free. The very next day, the very next game, it happens again. And Marcus is on the bench. And they send Marcus out to go knock it free. People remembered it just happened. It happened again. And it was kind of funny that he did it. And then the crowd started chanting MVP, MVP. And it was like a funny moment. But what made it so great was after the game, and you can Google it, the headline of the story, Boston Celtics' Marcus Smart grabbed a broom and was swept away by the love fans showed him. Just Google Celtics' Marcus Smart broom, and you might get it. After the game, I just was looking for a funny quote. And then he goes into a quote that said, I remember a time when those chants were different types of chants for me. I just stayed with it, kept working. Finally, people are seeing the things that are valuable that I bring to the table on every given night. And he went into this. He took that moment and was like, yeah, I know people are chanting MVP, but people love me at a time where they, they didn't really love me you know, in a city where they didn't really love me like that. And so getting that quote out of Marcus Smart and realizing the gravity of that moment, absolutely my favorite moment covering the team because so unexpected. It was such a benign thing that happened. A moment lost to history, except Marcus felt something there. And I'm the one that got that story. And that was, that was a lot of fun. We'll wrap up the mailbag podcast here with questions about Batman villains on this team, the city edition jerseys, and an interesting idea for where to put a stadium in Boston. We'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning championships. We know that in Boston. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whatever you're into, speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP, the Jalen Brown, and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. It's only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Uh, Built Different is my latest book. It's available on johncorrales.com. Go to the store. You can purchase this book. You can purchase my other book. If you've already bought this book and you want it personalized and signed, I have labels there for $10 that I will personalize, sign, and send off to you that you can affix inside the cover, and now you have a signed book. So if you want signed, personalized copies, uh, $30. United States only, $30. International shipping is available, but you got to email me uh, for the actual rate because I will calculate it USPS and tell you what the actual shipping cost is and we can figure out a price there. Sorry, that's, I can't, 30 bucks to Australia. It's just not going to cover it for me. I'm sorry. I love you, Australia, but you're far. Let's wrap up the mailbag. Bruce, Bruce Wayne <laughs> wants to know, which members of the Celtics team would be what Batman villains? Honestly, look, I don't think any of these Celtics would be Batman villains. Um, I I don't... Could Jason Tatum be a Batman villain? I, I don't think so. Who would be the Joker? There's no one who's that funny on this team. 
Uh, maybe, maybe Derek White could be the Joker. Um, because, oh, actually, the funniest guy on the team would be Luke Cornett. So I guess Luke Cornett can be the Joker. Um, I, I, I'm, I struggle. I struggle with these guys. Like the only thing I could come up with is Luke Cornett is the Joker, uh, or the Riddler. Uh, one of those people would be it. Um, who else? Not as, as not a big Batman guy either. So, um, who would be the Penguin? I mean, there's no. I I, I would have put like. I would have made Grant Williams the penguin. That would have been fun. Uh, but uh, who, maybe Jalen Brown. Could Jalen Brown be Bane? I feel like Jalen Brown could pull off Bane. He's the only one that has like a side to him that'd be like, okay, I can see him making a, a heel turn. But that's, that's the best I can do. Let me know. Get into the comment section. This is one for you in the, the comment section. Get in there. Tell me who would be a great... Batman villain because I'll be honest with you I wanted to put it out there uh mostly to say I can't I can't picture any of these guys as bad guys you know there are other players in the past who maybe but not these guys uh Manny says uh asks how disappointing are this year's possible city edition jerseys it's a literal copy and paste from last year with different colors we won a championship they should be special I agree. I hate them. If you've seen them online, I tweeted it out. I want to see them in real life because they look just like black jerseys with highlighter green Celtics in a non-Celtics font. I'm all for creativity. We have the regular white jerseys. We've got the regular green jerseys. I don't mind alternates. That's fine, but do put some, put some work into it, make it, make it Boston, do something Boston with the city edition jerseys. My idea, I put this out there before. I will say it again. The old green line is a perfect kind of template for the jerseys with the white at the top, black stripe in the middle and green at the bottom, green shorts, black waistband, white on the top with some piping on the side to tie it all together, but at least give it a shot, right? Make it look like, and you can make it look like the old T font or like there, I I've tweeted it out. I've, I've searched the old Boston North station, that yellow North station font could be the, the Boston and you can make the T part of the shorts, make it a different, make it a B instead of a T, however you want to do it. It's right there. It's a classic nod to Boston's history, Celtics history, the green line passing right in front of the old North station. Somebody with artistic ability can make that work. Use the Zakem bridge. That Zakem bridge has a, a, a tall, like kind of nod to the Bunker Hill Memorial. And then it splits out down into what looks like an upside down V. Well, you can make that right up the side. The shorts can have that base and the Bunker Hill part could be up the side. Like that makes perfect sense. And then you can do the supports across the front of the Jersey. And there you go that you can make that classy and clean and make that into a Celtic City edition. Somebody do that. Why not do that? This year's, from what I saw, suck. I hate them. Maybe they'll look different in person. I hope, beyond hope, they look different in person. Uh, Jonas says, you keep saying there's nowhere to build a stadium, but I think you're, you're not thinking out of the box enough. New Zealand had a very similar problem. Uh, so they built a stadium on the water itself. Could we build a stadium in or on the bay? Traffic would be interesting, but think of the duck boat parade winning a chip on the water. It's funny. So when I was in New York City, I lived in New York City for a little while working in television there. And there was a proposal for Madison Square Garden to be built uh, on 
the river on the Hudson River. They had a whole plan. I think it was a fake plan to try to get some money from the city to re refurbish the current Madison Square Garden. So there is somewhere out there in, you know, NBA land, a plan somewhere to build a stadium on the water. I don't think it's possible. Uh, traffic would be uh, extraordinarily problematic. <laughs> you have uh, conservation issues, you know, building something like that. You can't build anything on land. I can't imagine the engineering and red tape you'd have to clear to build out onto the water and put an arena there. Uh, that's, I think would be, that would be asking for some, some trouble, but the concept is fun. I like the idea. If there was a way to put uh, an arena on, you know, over the water, why not do it? Uh, maybe you can do some sort of like bridge and put something over the Charles river. Let's do it that way. Uh, I, I don't know. You kind of have to get creative. You kind of almost have to build up. But the problem with Boston is look at the old map of Boston. The original Boston was a fraction of the size of the current Boston. In fact, if you go down to um, the Faneuil Hall area and around the city, you'll see lines in the in the pavement there of where the shoreline used to be. And they just filled it in and built on top of it. So you can't build huge skyscrapers all over Boston. It's hard to build around Boston because there's a lot of landfill dredging and stuff that's gone on already. Like Beacon Hill used to overlook the water. <laughs> the state house used to overlook the water. And then a lot of that all got filled in and built. So, uh, in fact, you can technically say that the current TD garden is built on water because that used to be water once upon a time and they filled it in and built stuff there. So, uh, I don't think they can do it. I love the idea though. You got to get creative with it. Finally, Randall says, besides the Simpsons, my favorite, what other shows do you love? And could you add more of those references into future pods. Uh, I would be happy to if I, you know, pops into my head. The Simpsons have so many high quality references. They just are, there's something for everything. But Always Sunny in Philadelphia, huge fan. Huge fan. Uh, harder to put those references into this podcast because some of the ones that I would like to make, I'm not allowed to make due to making this family friendly. So that would be one. Uh, Rick and Morty, kind of the same idea. Uh, big Rick and Morty fan. Love Rick and Morty. Uh, I could go back and make some old Cheers references uh, for the old school folks. Seinfeld, there I make some Seinfeld references uh, here and there. So, But that's that's kind of my wheelhouse. Simpsons is an easy one. They just... I don't know what, how they did it, but they've got a, they've got great references for anything. Oh, literally anything. You, there's a Simpsons reference for it. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, podcast. Uh, mailbag is, uh, it will still hang around here during the preseason. I'm uh, looking forward to getting to more basketball questions. Media day Tuesday. This is the Monday podcast. Uh, the Tuesday podcast will be done before media day. So I got one more and then the Wednesday podcast will be all media day. You'll hear quotes. You'll hear from probably Joe Missoula, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis. I'll do all I can. And then practice. They practice all week, they practice next week. They go off to Abu Dhabi to play the Denver Nuggets a couple times. That's happening in less than two weeks, week and a half. We're a month away from opening night. I mean, it's here. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I've got the inside look at the team. 
so make sure you're subscribed. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into that comment section. Let me know what you think. Give me those Batman villains, all that stuff. I would love it now if you shared the podcast, told everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.